she was all of those things. She had come to this country from El Salvador and said, when I had a lesson, she would make the money for her husband when she was in her room. She had uh, two year old twins and I believe a four year old and a five year old. Recently separated from her husband who took custody of their children, Bruno was just getting her new life started. What do you suspect happened? They screamed her move from the ground floor the kitchen window. It appears from the evidence that he obtained a light woman there in the kitchen and that he then had in her bed where she was asleep. We're talking about a 90-pound, 32-year-old woman, defenseless, asleep in her bed in a home where if there's any one place in the world she should feel the most secure. That attack is every woman's nightmare. In fact, it was a seasoned detective's worst nightmare as well. It was unlike any other scene I've ever seen. I've ever seen. The violence that was visited upon her, that's what I said, was phenomenal. After she was dead, her body was somewhat mutilated. And you just, you know, that's, that's crap you see in the movies. In real life, that, that is very rare. It just doesn't happen. Like Ashley Ellen, Maria Bruno seemed to have no enemies that would do her this kind of harm. In your opinion, it looked like she was killed just to be killed. Yes, it was a bit of a puzzle. And they were able to eliminate the delay of robbery. And relatively quickly, we were able to eliminate sexual assault as being a murder. Unlike the Warren case, this time, the assailant was something behind. Outside of uh, Ms. Bruno's apartment was a blue cotton booty, like a shoe covering. Actually, I'm so pretty it was a drop of blood. From DNA testing, which we're going to find out what it was from a drop of booty. It was a clue, but it was also a dead end. No other evidence was discovered. How difficult did you think it was going to be to find this man's killer? I knew we would have a challenge ahead of us. I knew it was going to be a difficult case. What Detective Lilyfield didn't know at the time was for the investigators to finally solve the murders of Maria Bruno and Ashley Edelman, another woman would have to come face to face with a killer. In 2008, in Santa Monica, California, one woman did just that, and survived. Mandy, I got called about 12.30 uh, in the morning. They asked me to come out and uh, respond to a uh, single stab and went to the Santa Monica Police Sergeant Richard Lewis was one of the first on the scene to question the victim, whose identity we have been asked to protect. What can you tell us about her? She's uh, probably a lady. Um, Single at the time, and uh, just some of the other things that I have to say about it. Sergeant Lewis' account of what investigators believe happened that night has a remarkably familiar ring to it. It's RV Leaf at around 11.40 in the morning. He gained access into this window with his open a few inches. Once he got inside there, he then opens the front door and kind of stages it as an escape route. Um, proceeds into the bedroom where she's sleeping, and what awakes her is a knife being plunged into her. He just flat out stabbed her. Right. She was stabbed multiple times uh, in her chest and in her shoulder, and suffered several wounds to both of her hands as she's grabbing this knife as it's being plunged at her longer. Um, Hold on, where those wounds are all required surgery. And at some point, there was a, a lull in the action, so to speak. And uh, she was able to get her feet up and kick him off of her. Um, and that's where he then uh, took her home and he left her location. Did he say anything to her? Uh, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So he comes out the store and there's blood uh, on the steps right outside the front door? He has some blood on the steps. And then blood on the concrete steps here, leading up. Oh! oh. The investigators followed the blood oh, to the street of the trailer home, leading them to believe that the attacker was still trying to work out what he did there. So how did that fall out of the net? Absolutely brilliant goalkeeping. Sure that did you think that blood was going to be? Huge. Huge. Promising attack, this. About 25 days after uh, submitting my samples to the crime lab, um, I'm informed by a uh, criminal that uh, we actually had the hit, a hit, the DNA hit, um, the profile that was determined by the gun. Come on, Benzema. When your head just created from here. Yes. And what did you think? A chance to win it. I said, I got my gun. 24 hours later, Michael Gargiulo was arrested and charged with attempted murder. What some detectives was where they found he'd been living, directly across the alley from the woman he had allegedly attacked. He'd be the second building down on the first one. 
Was Jr. His response was he was going to the police car to be taken to the station for booking. Oh, oh, come on, that's coming off here. Yeah. That tells me a lot. It tells oh, me that uh, he wasn't sure for which crime he's getting charged for. Cutting through me. He wasn't such an unreasonable question, considering that Lewis had found Bergeron's DNA in the National DNA Database. It had been filed there by Cook County authorities. What was that? Fucking shocking! Oh, look at this. Also, we get a phone call. Cook County's in town, and uh, they want some assistance on the investigation. Purely by chance, the Chicago investigators had turned to LAPD oh, detective Tom Small, who happened to be investigating Gorgiulo for the murder of Ashley. Oh, at the time. Oh, so it's so nearly a long way from a chance to really make a deal. Absolutely. It was just a kind of score goals to stay in front of them for longer. Next, Lewis called Detective Mark Lillyfield on a hunch that the attack in Santa Monica might be related to the murder of Maria Bruno. What was that? Oh my god, this is so annoying. Search Gargiulo's old apartment. And she was in the attic of the apartment along with the family of the National Police. A blue cotton booty just like the same one that we had found at the crime scene. The same manufacturer, the same make, the same model of booty. Terrible hot problems. Awful. Detectives Small and Lilyfield were both convinced. They had found their killer. We were able to submit our cases to the district attorney here in Los Angeles. We felt there was sufficient evidence to go ahead and charge this for our well. On September 4th, 2008, while already in jail for the attack in Santa Monica, Michael Gargiulo was indicted oh, on two God. additional charges. This time for the murders of Ashley Ellery and Maria Bruno. We got ourselves a serial killer. No question in your mind. Not in my mind, no. Even with Gargiulo behind bars, California in the Suarez, Jesus Christ. One question. Why hadn't Cook County arrested Gargiulo for the murder of Trisha Picaccio years well, that's earlier? That's a really good authority it's to about take If she were in custody for another matter, um, he wouldn't have been free to harm anybody. In fact, Cook County did have evidence that could have put Gargiulo in custody. Back in 2003, the Illinois State Crime Lab matched the Gargiulo oh, DNA collected in Los Angeles to an identified DNA found on Trisha Picaccio's oh, fingernails. He's obviously a person of interest. I, I can't express what my personal opinion is okay, regarding his guilt or innocence. Jack Blakey is the head of cold case prosecution for the Cook County State Attorney. Based on the findings of fingernails, we have a profile Mindy. of both the victim and Mike Gargiulo. They're telling me they had DNA. Oh my rifles. God, what are you trial, doing? Trisha's brother was convinced that Cook County had found a smoking gun in his sister's case. But then, inexplicably, they decide not to act on DNA evidence. The evidence just hasn't been there. Uh, oh, what the fuck? Tomorrow. 
What was that? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> Oh, man, this is DNA can be left by either a defensive wound or it can be left by casual contact. He was a friend of the family at the time, or at least uh, was present at the house on those occasions. That appears to be the biggest obstacle in charging Michael Gardula with the murder of Trishika Kanchala. The state attorney's office claims that because the crime lab only used a few spots to collect all the DNA from Trisha's fingernails, it is impossible to determine where that DNA came from. Boom! The fingernail or underneath it. And that is from what they say to the state attorney. Why, nothing. Great one, too. If the DNA was found under Trisha's nails, it could be argued that it's not going to be shot back against her attacker. Would it have been better if the scrubs had been done a different way? Certainly with the science that we have now, we could have taken advantage Didn't of that. Didn't think that was coming. So a simple but ultimately flawed laboratory procedure appears to have tied the prosecution's hands. We have DNA evidence and the experts cannot testify that it was anything to do with it. even more sinister. But it might be casual as well. Which is exactly what Gardula wants the investigators to believe about Trisha Picaccio, as he told us from jail. DNA does not prove this. Now he's got the steady car. 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 This attack looks highly promising. Can he play it in? In that time, he has had several meetings with a 48 Hours producer to consider the possibility of an on camera interview. All of those meetings were recorded by the jail. Fuck! Fast you, Defender! Gardula would not discuss any of the charges against him, but it's clear from these reports given to us by authorities that he is convinced of jail. And the last time, he was in the middle of this program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. Uh, is that decision in the old way? Have you ever dealt with someone like this? No. It was pretty remarkable. I, I've met some sick puppies and some other oh, people. Oh, what about the possession. Jesus! I've never known anybody quite like Michael Zula. While the investigators in California are not in the race to the top, there is still one troubling question that concerns them greatly. Do you think there are other victims out there? I think there's a very real chance. We've got evidence and statements from Mr. Bozo and from other people that indicate that 10 might be 10 might be the magic number. We know that Michael Gargiulo travels between, the the top, uh, yeah. between Illinois and California. We read that brilliantly at the back. We would certainly love to hear from investigators or other well, witnesses, really people that have knowledge that maybe knew crowd. him or ran really in at some point. Full or top, not, not, not working. In the meantime, with Gargiulo finally behind bars, Los Angeles investigators to run its course. Oh, so man. Now it's up to the jury. What are you hoping for, Charles? Conviction. Oh, what the fuck up here now? That's just terrible. Will I go to this day as the death penalty? Yes, ma'am. You happy with the bun, no? But for the Pacacios, that won't be nearly enough. He's convicted of murder for the crime, even if he's sentenced to die. Is that enough for you? Because at least he will have been found guilty and isn't back out on the street. Good play, is in. Well, we saw the situation developing. It might be perfectly set up for the cancer attack, you know? Not at the same time, it's not really enough. Oh, yes! What a beauty! Gorgeous! The 
in your fight. Oh, look at that! Thank you, mate. That was absolutely fantastic. Oh, oh Hazard. Oh, that was brilliant. That was stunning. For charging Michael Gargiulo with first degree murder in the brutal slaying of the It was an announcement that the What the hell? I didn't even get shot off. Come on, you're in! The first step and then getting it to the police and having them down. <laughs> a sneaky third! Oh, yeah! Great ball over the top. Nice. Unselfish. goal against it. Performance wasn't it? Yeah. Particularly impressive. It, it will never be on the The only thing that's over is he's the 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 Where is that ball? Here they is. This is definitely a life and death struggle. This is a man's life who's on the line. They got their man. They did not do their job. What a beauty that was! That is just stunning. A stunning goal. Now, because of that broadcast, we can report there has finally been a breakthrough for a family that has been waiting nearly two decades for justice. 